Hey there, it's Mark from Mark's Astro Journey. So tonight I'm going to do an imaging session on M44, also known as the Beehive Cluster. And it also goes by the Latin uh, word presepe. I don't know, I'm not sure about the pronunciation. And that stands for manger. So it seems like the ancient Greeks and Romans thought that they saw it as a manger with two donkeys eating from it. And I think they thought of those two adjacent stars as the two donkeys. So it should be an interesting target. Um, we'll see how it turns out. I invite you to come along and enjoy the imaging session. I slewed to Betelgeuse and I'm going to check my focus. I already have the batten off mask on. It looks like it could be off a slight amount. Bring it a little closer. Yeah, it looks like it's slightly off center. I don't have an electronic focuser, so um, anytime you anytime you adjust the focus by hand, it's gonna shake the mount a little bit. So that looks like it brought it in the right direction. Not only do the three longer bars appear to intersect, but also those cross lines are showing up, which is a good sign with this batten off mask. So it looks pretty good. I'm going to lock the focuser. So for my imaging session, I did my polar alignment with iPolar. I have a Gem 28 Ioptron mount and a Skywatcher Evil Star APO telescope. And I'm also using um, SharpCap for the image capture as well as PHG2 guiding to uh, keep the target on track. So let's slew here to M44 or the B5 cluster. I've slewed to M44. I'm going to do a plate solve and resync. Okay, so it did a 0 0.02 degree adjustment. So the Beehive Cluster is best to be observed in the Northern Hemisphere when the constellation Cancer is higher in the sky. And for me, that's now, it's April. And at the about 9 p.m., when it's really getting dark, it's um, probably about 60 degrees in the sky, I guess, on the northwestern side. I'm going to start some guiding here. I have my exposure time set to only 30 seconds because this is really just stars. It's not a nebula or anything like that. So I don't see the point to have a super long exposure. Histogram looks still okay. Guiding. A little iffy. Seems to be guiding is not going very well tonight for me. Can't find any cable snags or any issues, but did recalibrations. Not sure. And I'm gonna start a capture on M44. And since time slipped away from me and uh, my first imaging session didn't go well, I'm going to set the time for only maybe an hour and 15 minutes. So according to Wikipedia, this uh, cluster is one of the nearer clusters to Earth. I was also reading the, in the article there on Wikipedia, it said that this is one of the first Ob among the first objects that uh, Galileo studied with his telescope, which is kind of interesting thinking about, you know, the history of astronomy. Okay, so I'll put the end cap on and I'm going to capture darks, leaving all the settings for exposure and gain and everything exactly as they were for the uh, light frames. So I'll capture 20 of those. I'll just kick that off. So this will be done. The dark the darks will be done at 12.45 a.m. Check back then. I don't know about you, but if you don't have a, an observatory or a permanent place to have your telescope set up, a lot of times when you're going out and setting all your equipment up, that's one of the things that's going through your mind is like, what can I do to make this less work to go through setting this up every time? But the observatories looked at 
different kinds of them. You know, the ones that are kind of already prefabricated that you just put on a concrete foundation. Um, they're pretty expensive, so the person has to try to come up with a way to think can justify that kind of expense. Um, maybe someday be a luxury, but for now I'm still breaking my equipment down every night, putting it all back in the house and setting it back up. The one thing I am doing is I'm leaving the image train altogether and just removing the telescope from the mount and then taking the mount inside and putting it back on the mount. So at least there's one part of the setup process that's a little bit faster by doing that. Okay, the darks have completed. So now I need to capture some flats. Got to put the uh, light panel on. Capture some flats. Looks like it is with the different colors representing the graph at 20% to, to between 20 and 50. This looks pretty good, so I'll capture 200 of those. An AstroPixel processor will just go through the typical steps to do the image processing, like, you know, normalization um, and analysis of the image quality and calibration. And then once that's all done, we can review the quality of the frames and choose the ones we want to keep and do our um, integration and stacking. So here in APP, we'll just select our light frames, flat frames, bias frames, dark frames, and kick off the analyze, which will do the calibration and analysis of the frames captured. And then once this is finished here, we'd be able to review and select the frames that we want to um, continue processing. So once the analyze is done, I like to go through and review the frames and to see how they look. We can't always rely on just the software alone. It's also good to look at like the shape of the stars and to see if you have satellites um, crossing or planes crossing your image, things like that. And then just eliminate those uh, really bad frames and just stick with the best frames. So I won't make you wait through this, but that's basically what I'm doing is just reviewing these frames and then unselecting them. And then once I get all the ones deselected I don't want to include, I usually clean those out and just stick with the ones I want to keep. So then once that step is done, we can kick off the integrate process and it'll do a series of tasks to do all the, that normalization and alignment and stacking of our images and produce a final stacked image. But of course we won't wait through all of this. So once the image is integrated in AstroPixel processor, I usually do a few minor adjustments. You can adjust the black point, white point, gamma correction, and the saturation sum. I find that's about the last uh, thing I do in AstroPixel processor. And after that, usually I move on to something else like GIMP to process it the rest. So here I'm applying a few of those adjustments um, to those things I mentioned in AstroPixel processor pro. And then I usually save out the final image from APP to a couple different formats like JPEG, TIFF. And here we can see the integrated image. Once I get done processing the image in AstroPixel processor, I've been using GIMP. Um, I don't have Adobe Photoshop. The license is pretty expensive and GIMP is uh, free, so it seems to have a lot of the same capabilities. And so that's what I usually do to put the, fine, uh, the finishing touches on the processed image. 
So for this image, I think here in GIMP, I'm just going to adjust the brightness and contrast, as well as the uh, black, the blackness, and also the exposure. And I think that's the last things I'll do to uh, bring out the most out of the data that was captured. And of course, um, save this final image out to a few different formats. So I thought this imaging session turned out pretty good after I stacked and processed the images. Since I have a refractor telescope, you're not going to see those diffraction spikes that you see in a lot of people's images after they process them. And that's a result of those, you know, bars that they have in the structure of their telescope. So I don't have that. Those look pretty cool, but obviously they're not real. They're, they're not really part of what the stars look like. So let me know what you think in the comments, how the image turned out. I'd like to hear your feedback and wishing you clear skies. Thank you.